Good morning and welcome to this morning prayer on Thursday the 30th of April. Uh, we will have a few moments of stillness before we begin our service. Our morning prayer begins on page three of our prayer booklets. We meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Faithful one, whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and to shape our lives. For the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Long-suffering and of great goodness, I confess to you, I confess with my whole heart, my neglect and forgetfulness of your commandments, my wrongdoing, thinking and speaking, the hurt I have done to others, and the good I have left undone. O oh God, forgive me, for I have sinned against you, and raise me to newness of life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear now the words of Jesus for all who are truly sorry and seek to renew their lives. Your sins are forgiven. Go in peace. Come and follow me. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of all, to be glory and praise forever. You founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, and in these last days you have spoken to us through in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence amongst us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts. Let your spirit ever renew our lives, and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 136. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious, for his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods, for his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endures forever. Who alone does wonders, his mercy endures forever. Who by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endures forever. Who laid out the earth upon the waters, for his mercy endures forever. Who made the great light, for his mercy endures forever. The sun to rule the day, for his mercy endures forever. The moon and the stars to govern the night, for his mercy endures forever. Who smote the firstborn of Egypt, for his mercy endures forever. And brought out Israel from among them, for his mercy endures forever. With a mighty hand and outstretched arm, for his mercy endures forever. Who divided the Red Sea in two, for his mercy endures forever. And made Israel to pass through the midst of it, for his mercy endures forever. But Pharaoh, and his host, but Pharaoh and his host he overthrew in the Red Sea, for his mercy endures forever. Who led his people through the wilderness, for his mercy endures forever. Who smoked to great kings, for his mercy endures forever. And slew mighty kings, for his mercy endures forever. Sihon, king of the Amorites, for his mercy endures forever. And Og, king of Bashan, for his mercy endures forever. And gave away the land for an inheritance, for his mercy endures forever. A heritage for Israel his servant, for his mercy endures forever. Who remembers us when we were in trouble, for his mercy endures forever. And delivers us from our enemies, for his mercy endures forever. Who gives food to all creatures, for his mercy endures forever. Who gives, gives thanks to, to the God of heaven, for his mercy endures forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is a continuation of the book of Exodus, chapter 25, verses 1 to 22. The Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to take for me an offering. 
from all those uh, from all whose heart prompt them to give, you shall receive the offering for me. This is the offering you shall receive from them: gold, silver, and bronze, blue, purple, and crimson yarn, and fine linen, goat's hair tanned, goat's hair tanned ram skin, fine leather, acacia wood, oil for lamps, spices for the anointing oil, and the the, the fragrant incense. Onyx stone and gems to be set in the ephod and for the breastplate, and have them make that me a sanctuary, so that I may dwell amongst them, in accordance with all that I show you concerning the pattern of the tabernacle, and of all its furniture, so you shall make it. They shall make an ark of acacia wood, it shall be two and a half cubits long, and a cubit and a half wide, and a cubit and a half uh, tall. You shall overlay it with pure gold, inside and out, you shall overlay it. And you shall make a moulding of gold made it, ma upon it all around. You shall cast four rings of gold for it, and put, th and put them on its four feet. Two rings on one side, and two rings on the other side. You shall make poles of acacia wood, and overlay them with gold. And you shall put the poles into the rings on the side of the ark, by which to carry the ark. The poles shall remain in the rings of the ark, they shall not be taken from it. You shall put into the ark of the, co the covenant that I shall give to you. Then you shall make a mercy seat of pure gold, two and a half cubits shall be its length, and a cubit and a half its width, and you shall make two cherubims of gold. You shall make them of hammered work, at the end of the, at the end, two ends of the mercy seat. Make one cherub at one end, and one cherub at the other. Of one piece with the mercy seat you shall make the cherub as its two ends. The cherubs shall spread out their wings above, overshadowing the mercy seat with their wings. They shall face each other. The faces of the cherubim shall be turned towards the mercy seat. You shall put the mercy seat on top of the ark, and, it shall, and in the ark you shall put the covenant that I shall give you. There will I meet you. And for above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubim that are on, on the ark of the covenant, I will deliver to you all my commandments for the Israelites. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our New Testament reading is a continuation of Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 57 to the end of the chapter. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. Her neighbours and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. On the eighth day they came to, to the circumcise the child, and they were going to name him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said, No, he is to be called John. They said to her, None of your relatives have this name. Then they began motioning to his father to find out what name he wanted to give him. He asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. And all, were, uh, and all of them were amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue freed, and he began to speak, praising God. Fear came over all the neighbours, and all these things were talked about throughout the entire hill country of Judea. All who heard them pondered them and said, what then will this child become? For indeed the hand of the Lord was with him. Then his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke this prophecy. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has looked favourably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty saviour for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke through the, prophets, uh, through the mouths of his holy prophets from of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all that hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors, and has remembered his holy covenant. The oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham, to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness, before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to repair his ways, to give his knowledge of salvation to his peoples, by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the, tender in the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. The child grew and became strong in spirit. He was in the wilderness until the day he appeared publicly to Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So let us come to our canticle. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. 
through his holy prophets, God promised of old, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to repair his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So let us profess our faith and the faith of the whole church in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to God the Father. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for this day as it dawns. We give thanks for all that you have laid before us. May we meet the task today with you in our heart, the Holy Spirit upon our lips, and with your love being shown to all whom we deal with this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, we pray for all those affected by the coronavirus. We pray for all who are self-isolating. All who are shielding. All who are in quarantine. All in hospital. And all who have died. We pray too for the care homes looking after the elderly. And for those carers who visit the housebound. We pray for the work of the NHS. For the doctors, nurses, carers, scientists and staff for all who are helping to try to get people better. We give thanks for those who are recovering from the virus and for those who are heading home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, be with all those who are continuing their education this day, for all those who are struggling with the new norms, for those who are anxious about their examinations, for those who are uncertain about what the future may hold. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for this benefice, for its parishes, for your church and for your congregations. We pray for all those who are anxious to regather, for all those who are concerned about regathering. We pray that we get appropriate guidance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, we pray for peace in this world, for an end to violence and an end to suffering. We pray for all those who are in vulnerable situations. We pray for those who are at risk from domestic violence. We pray for those who are at risk of child abuse. We pray for those who are at risk of hunger. We pray especially for those who have no home to call their own. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for all who are sick in mind, body and spirit. We pray for all those who are suffering from long-term conditions. All those who are waiting for treatment, for operations, for those who are being rehabilitated, and those who are finding it slow progress. We pray for all those who are in the grips of addiction and for those whose families are being torn apart because of it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sovereign God, the defence of those who trust in you and the strength of those who suffer, look with mercy on our affliction and deliver us through our mighty Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour taught us the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. In darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy, help us, Heavenly Father, to trust your love, to serve your purpose and to praise your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with all who pray this day in his holy name, now and for evermore. Amen. Please do join me this afternoon at 5pm for evening prayer. And until we can see each other again, God bless, stay safe.